to a brand new series of Rough Science coming to you from the Spice Island of Zanzibar off the east coast of Africa. In this series, our scientists face their toughest trial yet as they take on the Indian Ocean. Over the next six weeks, they'll have to complete a set of marine challenges with a few bits of basic kit and a boatload of ingenuity. Our base on the high seas is a traditional fishing dhow and our site on land is an isolated beachside workshop. It's destination paradise for rough science. Our four scientists are Kathy Sykes, a resourceful physicist with boundless yes! energy. Mike Bullivant, an imaginative chemist who embraces the near impossible. Yes! Oh my God. <laughs> Ellen McCauley, a fearless have a go botanist from Missouri. Next thing is rinse it. <laughs> Jonathan Hare, physicist, inspired inventor, and artistic engineer. And me, Kate Humble, an experienced diver, I'll be going underwater to put their inventions to the ultimate test. Together we are Rough Science. As you know, we're going to be out on a boat to go and find this shipwreck, and you do get terribly dehydrated, lots of wind and sun and everything else. Now, we have got water in tanks here, mm -hmm. but uh, frankly, if any of us drink it, I think it might be the last thing we ever do. So, could you combine your botanical and chemical skills to make that water drinkable. You've got three days, you've got everything around here that you can pillage and plunder, and of course, we've got the trusty magic trunk. Ah. Ellen and Mike checking out the water they'll be cleaning up for our expedition. How's it looking? Oh, it doesn't look that bad, actually, no. It does look at those. Oh, there are wiggly things in there, aren't there? We can filter those off. There's also probably some waterborne diseases and some parasites that would wreak havoc with our gut. So, what's the solution? Well, you can purify water with chlorine mm -hmm. or activated charcoal or iodine. There's plenty of iodine. There's a form of iodine in the sea, which we could get out. Iodine, let's go for iodine. And brown seaweed, that's an accumulator of iodine. What does that mean? Well, it's like a sponge. When the plant is growing, yeah. it takes in iodine and it doesn't expel it. So the longer it lives and the more it grows, the more iodine it has as it concentrated in the plant. So now the search is on to find local seaweed that can be used to naturally purify water. Ellen is convinced she and Mike can find the brown seaweed that can purify our water supply. So uh, where are you taking me? We're going off to the east coast because it's a little bit more protected and there's likely to be a lot more coral as well as a lot of the brown seaweed that we're looking for. It grows really well with the coral. Are we nearly there? We've got a little ways to go. It is on day three, but at least Mike and Ellen have had a good day gathering seaweed. Why are you now festooning this stinky stuff all over our workshop? Well, tomorrow we've got to burn this and reduce it to ashes. Okay. And that'll be a faster process if it's dry. I mean, is it going to be absolutely full of iodine? It's brown seaweed, yep. and that's the stuff that in the temperate zone is collected to get iodine out of it. Okay. However, it's not the same species. So it's the same group, yeah. but not the exact kind. Don't you just hate botanists, Mike? <laughs> yes. what, do you, what do you think? I'm always confident. <laughs> You're going to hang up baskets and baskets of seaweed and then tomorrow make a big smelly fire. Yep. Good. That's something to look forward to. Have fun. But getting the ROV anywhere near the shipwreck is down to Kathy. I mean, just look at this map there. So is this the extraction process going on here? This is the start of it, yeah. We want the salts out of here, the salts that the seaweeds absorb from the sea. Is the iodine one of those salts, it basically? Is, yeah. So how do you isolate the iodine from the other stuff? Well, they all dissolve to different extents. Like some things are more di dissolve more in water than others, and it's the same with the salts. Luckily, the potassium iodide that we want to make yeah. the iodine uh, is very soluble in the water. But are you fairly confident whether this might have iodine in it or not? It's too early. No idea. No okay. idea. So all this could be not to no avail. Yeah. Mike can't purify our water supply if he doesn't have any iodine. Time okay. is. But Mike's iodine extraction process has moved on a stage and he's ready to strain off the salts. Just a bit of cotton wool in there as a physical barrier. It's only the salts we want, the salts that were in the seaweed. And this is going to separate the salts that we want from all of the muck in here that we don't want. So what should pass through the cotton wool is a clear liquid. It may be coloured yellow or 
I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Look at that. But I've still got to play around with this to concentrate the potassium iodide. And then I play with the potassium iodide to produce the iodine. Progress, although it looks like there's some way to go to get the iodine for our sea voyage. MECV is still a long way off, but Ellen's found a rough science way of doing the classic test for iodine. You got cassava to test to see if you have iodine. Do you have iodine? Uh, no, not yet. How's it oh, coming? Come on, it's, it's two thirds of the way through day two. <laughs> it's coming along all right. Yeah? Yeah, so what's with the cassava? What do we do? Okay. Because we can't prove the water is pure just by looking at it, yeah. um, we can prove that you've got iodine yeah. by putting it directly on this plant. Yeah, and so yeah. if it turns black on here, yep. it's definitely iodine. And if it doesn't, if it stays the brown orange, yeah. then we don't have it. There's only three hours left till sun. Ellen's helping Jonathan by making floats for his cables, and Mike's concentrating his seaweed brew. For eight hours, Mike has been dry roasting, boiling, straining and reducing his seaweed and water mixture. Now he's using sulfuric acid to convert the potassium iodide into iodine. I'm going to introduce concentrated battery acid down this tube here, because that should contain potassium iodide. And I'm going to try and convert the potassium iodide into iodine by adding acid to it. Uh, and what we should get is iodine vapour forming. Now, inside here is a cold finger. It's just a test tube that's inserted in there. And inside the test tube is just ice, water and a drop of salt. So it's just a cold, creating a cold surface on which the iodine vapour can solidify out. And iodine is one of those chemicals that sublimes. It goes straight from a vapour to a solid. There's no liquid phase. Let's see if anything happens when I add the acid to the amber solution. Oh, we've got some purple fumes. Recognise that's iodine. But there's definitely, we've got iodine there. Look at it. That's iodine. I just think this, this stuff was out in the sea two days ago, and Alan and I have extracted it. But will the vapour turn to solids on the cold finger? Oh. We've got some solid. It's not beautiful needle-shaped crystals, which is what I was hoping for, but there's some solid iodine uh, solidified out on that cold finger. So all we have to do now is to make some... just try and dissolve some of this iodine in water. Let's take this to Alan and uh, test it on the cassava while well, we've still got enough light. This is the kind of final proof, is it, Ellen? Right. How's this going to work? Well, basically, when you want to purify water, you take iodine and you mm -hmm. put it in the water and it kills basically everything that'll hurt you. OK. The other thing, the way you can prove it's iodine, is by putting it on something that's a not starch yeah. and something that is a starch, like this cassava. OK. So if you put it, when we put it on the papaya, go ahead, Mike. We expect it to stay this browny orange color. You can't even tell. No. Now, put it on this cassava. If it is iodine, it yeah. will turn a black purple. OK. But let's give it a try. Oh, yeah, no, look, no, it's definitely beginning to turn, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think we can pronounce it a success. Congratulations to both of you. Amazing. <laughs> so we have clean drinking water for our expedition. It's 20 minutes before sunset. How confident is Kathy?